welcome back to another episode of the America Marketing Podcast, where we bring you interviews from business owners, celebrity guests, and hot topics. I am your host, Brandon Adams. My co-host, super producer, Big Perion, should be joining soon. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to be a guest on the show, send us an email to americlepodcasts at gmail.com. On today's show, we have a very special guest that I'm excited to have on the show. Been a big fan of hers for years. She has some big things going on right now. She is a dance hall queen of the pack legend. I want to welcome to the show, Miss Patra. Patra, welcome to the show. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm just taking care of myself. A matter of fact, I just finished, you know, my little workout routine and everything. And um, I said, okay, today's the day because last week, you know, so my apologies, but thanks so much for having me. I'm doing good. great. It's all good. You're here. You joined the show. So let's get into it. Mm -hmm. You are a legend, queen of the pack. You have some new things that's going on that we're definitely going to discuss on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. So I want to go back to how did you get started doing dance hall, reggae, and working with a lot of the legends in the industry? Let's we'll start there. Oh, oh, wow. Most definitely. Thank you so much again for having me. Well, my career started off as a country girl. I started DJing in school around the neighborhood, you know, many places that I've gone. But most importantly is when I moved back to Kingston mm -hmm. is when I got to meet people like Shabarangs, uh, Ninja Man, Super Cat, General Trees, um, Yellow Man, all those people. And that's when I realized that I could actually, um, you know, take it to the international part of it. However, being a DJ started out for me in in, literally in primary school where we put the pants together and everything like that. And then I won a contest um, at Manning's High School in Savlamar, went back to Kingston with Bagger Brown. And that's when I went on staying and I got my record deal from Sony. So it was so beautiful. I really, <laughs> until this day, everything happens so quick because I always tell people, I say to them, say, listen, man, I don't want to be a DJ. I want to be a superstar. Mm -hmm. And they would laugh and stuff, you know, and everything like that. And as soon as I got to Kingston, I realized it was a male dominated field. But thankfully, I grew up with four brothers. So um, I kind of didn't know how to deal with the fellas already because my brothers always make me win on everything. So um, it was a very smooth sailing. And then meeting up with Lady G, uh, Mama Nancy, there's so much, um, junior ranks, all these people. It make, made life a little bit much more easier for me because I originally I'm just a singer because that's what I used to do in church and everything. So by having those strong people behind me I was you know I was able to do it and do it very well okay so being a singer a DJ mm -hmm. watching your videos and always watching your videos you're a great dancer as well so when did the dancing come about <laughs> well it's like in the dancing the skin out and everything yeah man listen I, I have to give props to the girls from Seaview Garden. That's what people would consider to be like the hood or wherever, but I call it a scheme. Okay. And in the country, I used to dance a lot because I did theater, I did everything. You know, we Jamaican love to dance and everything. Mm -hmm. But when I moved to Kingston back and I met up with these girls and everything, what happened, I realized I was whining wrong. You know, mm -hmm. I was whining to I was whining to the left. I was like, mm -mm -mm. and they were like, yo, what is that? I'm like, what do you mean? Them said, no, my Patrick, you need to wind to the right, wind to the right. So that's when they taught me, because guess what? If I did not learn those moves from those girls, they would not take me out anywhere at all, because they said that I would embarrass them, because mm -hmm. I would wind so fast. So they did everything. So so for me, dancing in school and theater was totally different from taking on the dance hall aspect of the whole thing. And um, I literally learned it from the streets. I may have to give mad respect to the people in Seaview Garden, Waterhouse, all over the Kingston corporate area because they actually helped me out a lot on that. Okay. So growing up and, you know, watching the whole reggae scene and all of that, it was very big in the 90s where the reggae artists would collaborate with hip hop artists and not only hip hop artists, uh, also R&B and everything. So mm -hmm. you collaborated with a lot of different artists. One of um 
you know, watching you when I was watching you and throughout the years, you one of your biggest videos was the one with Yo-Yo and the legendary Tupac. So yeah, how, yeah. tell us about that. How did that come about? Oh my gosh. First of all, you know, I have to give my props to my past management before, which was Clifton Dillon specialist and then my A&R Vivian Scott. Vivian Scott was responsible for coordinating um, who I collaborate with and how she wanted, um, you know, put the product out and everything. So she gave me a list of names of people that she think that I might be interested in. At the time, I knew nothing at all about Yo-Yo, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm this fresh girl, young girl coming up from the country, coming out and stuff like that. So I learned a lot in that aspect. So when she told me more about Yo-Yo, I started researching Yo-Yo and realized she was from one of the crew in California that I love, the Ice Cube and all these guys. And, um, listen to her raps, you know, listen how she sound and everything. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to California and meet up with Yo-Yo. So my a and I, and I went. When I got there, I met Yo-Yo and everything. And at first I was like, okay, what are we going to do? And then I decided to take the lead. I said, you know what? I'm a Jamaican girl. I'm going to defend all the fellas from the Caribbean, all over, all over. And she's going to defend the fellas from the States. But what happened is that after I was writing and putting everything down, I realized, say, you know what? Let's big up all of them and them all over the world, you know, and call it a romantic call. And that's how we, we come up with that. I did my idea, then she flew back to New York, and then we went into the studio and we got that done. As for the video, no, that's another crazy story. So now the single come out, the video has to be done. They decide to have the video done in um, Jamaica and California. So we did the Jamaican part, you know, at the time Yo-Yo was pregnant. So she came down to do the video and um, Josie Whale, you know, I let ride her around to, for safety. But then video rap, we love it, the vibe is sweet. So we go to California now. And while I was in California doing the video, my trailer door knocked. And my publicist at the time, Angela Ellaby, said to me that um, there's someone at the door to see me. And I was like, who's at the door to see me? He's like Tupac. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was not expecting Tupac or anything. I know he's cool, he's down to work and everything, but it was the last person I think that was going to come up and, um, you know, because I did not invite him to the video shoot. I don't know what happened until this day. However, there was a guy that we rent. I don't like to use the word rent. Let me take back that word. That's a horrible word. You can't rent the guys. We booked him for to be in the video. So that guy was already sitting down in the in the in the car. You know, so me and Yo-Yo supposed to sandwich him now and you know, I'm on a romantic car. I'm talking and then Tupac was like, yo, he's not gonna be in the video. I'm gonna be in the video. So he had to come out the car. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, was, it was one of the most awkward things because here we are and the guy, you know, we're vibing with him already so that he could have an idea of what we want him to do and everything and stuff like that. But make no mistake about it, my publicists and Sony, they were like, yo, he needs to get, get out of the car. Most definitely, because that's a classic video. Because every time I watch that video, I'm like, oh, Pac is in the video. Didn't have a lot in, in the video at all. But oh, and I'm telling you, and he stayed with us all throughout the whole shoot. We were on the highway, we were going down, we had fun, we smoked, we chat. It was like a ball. I think he had so much fun doing that video because, because he's an actor already and he was so down to it and so cool. Plus, he loved the Caribbean culture and he loved the dance hall vibes. You know, what I mean, there are a couple of times when you know, um, there's certain places that he would want to see when it comes to our culture and everything, because he's a very private person. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how he ended up in the video. He just decided to show up and say, get the guy out of the car. I'm the one that's going to be in the video. And trust me, it has been, it's, it, it's such, it was such a beautiful thing to see somebody so huge and so down to earth and real, you know, but not only that, capturing the moment and give us that energy to make the video, you know, I literally got the, the Caribbean flavor and the American flavor that I was looking for. So rest in peace, Pac, man. And I'm telling you, it's, you'll never meet a nicer person than Pac. I mean, me and Biggie I was also- both, I met both of them before. Oh, so you know. Yeah, you know the personality. Both. Yeah, what people seen is a whole different thing. I, I see Biggie was like a big teddy bear. And then teddy speaking, bear. Of, speaking of Biggie, not only Pac, but Biggie, you're in the uh, One More Chance video as well with Biggie. Oh, 
Yes, most definitely. You know, when Biggie called, the queen has to show up because I called him my big teddy bear and, you know, he's half Jamaican and, you know. So when they were doing the video, um, they reached out to my publicist and my record company. And as soon as I heard it was Biggie video and I heard all these female was going to be in it. When I got there, they wanted me to be the one that danced in the video. I said, listen, come on, guys. This video is so sexy and laid back. I'm going to do the same thing that Mary J. Blige and everybody was doing, which I'm going to sing and express myself and put my little thing in because it's R&B. And I remember Biggie and his wife, Faith, was mm -hmm. in there doing the thing. It was just like a big house party. I yeah, was right. there for like three, four hours hanging out. Everybody was there. And um, it was fabulous. Aaliyah, who was also a good friend of mine, I missed her. Listen, she's was one of the nicest person I've ever met in the music industry. Very shy, very reserved and all that stuff, but very classy and respectful. So it, it, it it's a whole lot of history that comes with um, the things that I've done. Yeah. We got Big Perry on on the show. Big Perry on. Join, <laughs> thank you for joining the show. You are with the legend, dance hall, queen of the pack, Patra. I already know, man. I'm so excited. I'm sorry for my. Hey, um, what's, up? what's up? What's up? What's up? Chilla, I'm chilla, here. Chilla. I'm here. Just finished my workout and was just waiting on you guys to just pop up because I wanted to make sure I deliver this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Today is my baby girl's birthday, so we was getting everything prepared for that. So I'm sorry for my tardiness, but. Oh, no, I, I told everyone, so when I'm doing my interview at 11, nobody called me, but they're not thinking, so my apologies. Oh, no, you good, you good. <laughs> I, wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about um, the the uh, dance hall artists today and the Afrobeats artists that are out right now? Do you have, like, favorites that you... you no, no, like? no, well, 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 um, what happened is, just not to say, it's like, Afrobeats and dance will be obviously they're close and everything like that. But I've been going to Africa for so many years that when I'm in Africa, all I'm listening to is the great Africa rhythm and Afrobeats from way back when. But Burner Boy and all, you know, all these guys, they come out and literally make it happen. Because I remember in Senegal hanging out with Yusunde and all these people, you know, and I know Angelique and all those beautiful ladies, but their music crossed so much boundaries. But when the Afro B comes out, it's nothing new to me. It was mm -hmm. just already just happy that the world actually has finally gotten a taste of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to feel the vibrations and everything that's going on. So what's going on for it now? It's well deserved, and I'm happy that the continent is right up on on top of there. Because listen, Africa, a lot of people might be poor sometimes. Well, I'm telling you, when it comes to party, dancing, love families sharing and all that they have that down pat they they make use of what they have and as of for dance hall today now as you know people say that some of it has changed to like um the type of music and how artists um you know do their thing on it and stuff like that um i think that the original dance hall music will always be um what do you call it now the best thing ever happened because when I moved to Kingston as a little girl and I go to go to jamming studio, Stone Love, Metro Media, and all these things, when the real dance hall music hits you, you literally get goosebumps. Um, so I will always remain in um old school for life. But um I, I don't normally comment on the, the current status of what's going on because this generation have their own way of looking at things and music has evolved um pertaining to certain group. And you know, it everybody's doing what they're doing but for me personally i'm just a dieted dance alpha and i'm like a super kid type you know what i mean because i'm after all i'm old school but there's a lot of good things going on for a couple of these artists as well but you know i think that the 90s rule dance all real dance all. if the you can't write them everything the 90s yes. was the oh, best yes. era <laughs> Oh my gosh. And listen, I just finished up bad, 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 bad. When I say bad dance hall, you know, I, I, first of all, I can't even talk about it yet, but I didn't I can't even be, believe that they draw me out to 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 do that song, but it is one of it. But um, as I said, the real dance hall back in the days can never be replaced. Never be replaced. And I can literally see some of it coming back around. 
-hmm. What I like about this generation, although, you know, they kind of do their things a little bit different and stuff like that, they, um, they still respect the old school because when they hear it, they know, you understand? And that's why Vibes Cartel and all those guys who dominated the scene in dance art, when them can go over and over like a shabarang stand, you know, tingling and all these things, you know. So the foundation will always be there, but there has been, you know, many different types of ways, like you have reggaeton as well. So um, people are just dabbling in what they, they feel is comfortable, but I will always remain old school forever. <laughs> yes, that's that's beautiful. I love everything about the 90s and a, a lot of the producers now and um, up and coming producers, they're going back and um, a lot of them are taking old school music and reviving it, uh, remixing it um, for this generation. They can't deny hit music and good feeling music, good music, period. No, so it doesn't matter what age they are. Yeah, no, and not only that. You know, I remember when I was just entering the dance hall scene. First of all, when I have to go out at night with the girls, because I've never gone out alone. There's a crew that I would have to go to because they know where to go to. I remember that the way you used to dance in the dance hall, and I mean, I don't want to like, but the way people used to dance in the dance hall, that slow whine and that um feeling. You don't even have to know the person. You can say, right, yeah, one dance and we're gone. And think, no, it's a whole different thing. You have to move out of the way so that um, other people take over the whole thing. So it's crazy. But um, as I said, every generation, every cycle, things has changed. Um, but we, we shouldn't have to worry, though. You know, because as you just said, you can see all the producers and all these guys are going back to the roots and everything. And in the end, I think that once the producers take the reign, that's what the artist has to follow. Um, and it's now the time, you know. Well, Patrick, you're on with a gold record producer right now, Big Perion. Big Perion, you and Patrick need to do some some joints together. Yes, yes, yes. I've been studying and listening to the new music, and I'm I'm excited. I like what what you're doing. Oh man, you haven't heard anything yet. Tender Touch is just a tip of the iceberg because. Um, it was a good thing that I reached out, you know, VPAL and everything like that. They understand the whole um, reggae slash crossover dance all thing and stuff. So it's a good partnership with pertaining to that. And this is just, um, I would consider, I, I like to call it the warm, the warm, you know, because I'm getting ready now to start doing some promotion and hit the road and everything like that. And um, yeah, what I'm doing is fantastic, but I'm open to, um, you know, other ideas as well, because uh, my team putting together some serious Afrobeat, as you spoke about a while ago, and as I currently said, is that I just finished up some wicked stuff. So um, I'm open. I want to hear your sexy um award <laughs> event and, um, track. Make sure it's sexy. <laughs> yeah. We got you. I sure will. We got I sure you will. Patrick, <laughs> so yeah. we're going to touch on something different because... Mm -hmm. We all love food. And oh, yeah. a birdie told me that you went to culinary school and you also have your own restaurant. So, of course, I have my own restaurant. So are you going to make us some rice and peas, some oxtails, some curry goat? Oh, that's not a problem. But before you say those things that you just said, you have to say sexy food because that's what I cook. Okay. Sexy, sexy food. Sexy okay. Food. okay. So you are. Yeah, all of what you just told me a while ago, that I, could, I can cook all of that for you. But what I'll do, I eliminate the, the bad stuff out of it without you even knowing. And because I cook so natural, that's how it becomes sexy food. Not to mention when the queen touch it, you have to make a sound, man. I'm telling you. So um, my restaurant, Chateau Seven Gourmet, came up by an accident. I was passing this place and we saw this place. And I said, oh, my God, I could open a juice bar here. Because, you know, I changed my lifestyle, where I eat and everything and stuff. And then the person who owns the place say, oh, you know, that jerk center is also up. I'm like, what? I've never done jerk and I've grilled and I've done everything and stuff like that. But because I've traveled so much, I've learned so much about different food and everything. And I always want to be in the food business. And it just pops up. Then I learned how to deal with it. I had people before. They weren't giving me the sex that I'm looking for, you know, because I have to eat and make a sound. Uh. Uh, whatever it is like something has to be going on 
And then I decided to put myself out there. I was in Uganda at the time. I also learned some ideas over there as well when it comes to natural eating, because they do everything fresh. Nothing actually goes in the fridge. And um, I started implementing certain ideas, but with natural stuff. And then my restaurant, Chateau Seven Gourmet, I started having people tasting it and I started using the word sexy food and the word just spread. Literally, people were laughing, you know. People were laughing. So how are you going to put sexy? We want, we want some of it. Don't worry, you know, I definitely, and they were like, um, how do you get food sexy? I was like, that's because I touch it. And then when they eat it, they realize that it wasn't. And I'm telling you, my restaurant has saved me so much, guys, because, because of all the things that I've gone through, I did not know how to communicate with people anymore. Um, I'm not talking my fans, I'm just talking in general, even regular people in the streets, I would have this horrible phobias and afraid and um, feel distracted because I was still working and getting out of, you know, uh, my past um, uh, business affairs and stuff like that. And when I opened the restaurant, I started learning how to communicate back with people. First of all, they didn't know who I was. A couple of people didn't know who I was for a while until New York Times came. Because I, I said, I want people to respect me for my food. I don't want them to come say, oh, Patrick, things. I want them to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And then one day I was there and the New York Times came by. I didn't know if they came by and ate or it is. Then this photographer came by with this long camera. And I was like, okay, people always come and take my picture. Not a problem. The guy came up to me and said, um, he's on a, um, a mission. And the mission is that they sent him to me to cover my restaurant because the food is so great. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, who is that? And he said, New York Times. I was like, man, stop playing games. You know, so he's like, I'll be back in half an hour. Please have a couple of the things them ready, you know? And I'm telling you, I did that. Oh my God, the next three weeks, I saw where I was in the New York Times, I almost lost it. I mean, I'm like, oh my God, if I can be in the New York Times as a chef mm -hmm. and not as a singer, which I've done the, the New York Times singing thing, that means the food business is really working out. Really good. After that, I have the U.S. Embassy. I do their parties. I do all this stuff, the United Nations, EU, bossman, madman, regular people, everybody, entertainers. Sean Paul would call me when he's having his party to make sure that everything is arranged or meetings. And I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And it's been successful. Then I'm supposed to move from Stony Hill to go down in the mid city. And right as soon as I was moving, one of the biggest projects in my career came looking for me. Um, I can't talk about all of it right now, but all I can say is it's. We lost audio. Um, okay. Yeah, man. And. Yes, it's so huge over there. And they said to me that there was a part that was written and they said I should read for it and everything. And I read for it. <laughs> oh my God. And I got the call back and said that um, I got the part. So then now I had to close my restaurant down and um, for a few months. Hold on one second. No problem. It's a beautiful Yes, sorry about that. I had to close the mud because they keep knocking on the window now. No sorry problem. about it. Yeah, man, you're good, you're good. Yeah, 10, 20 minutes. All right, sorry, guys. Yeah, so after doing that now, I decided to take a break um, from the restaurant and do that. Then I realized this was going to be huge. Then as I was about to open, that's when DJ Cassidy called me and said, he want me to do past the mic? That was on the that was, that, <laughs> yeah, was, that was excellent. And I saw you on there, and that was... That was great. And I love so, it. Thank you very much. So when my agent called me and said, Yo, DJ Cassidy is doing this dance all thing and they're looking for the old school artists and stuff. I was like, okay, cool. So I rehearsed for it, link up, and I did it. And as soon as I finished that, it's like my whole world has changed. It's as if I'm like, oh my God, if I'm gonna come back out, this would be the perfect opportunity for me to do so. And that's from when it started, okay, getting my music and materials together and my agent, solid agents to them, get a couple of shows for me. That's when I did the um, the Barclays Center in Brooklyn with Shabarang, Scapeton, Yellow Man, which was a beautiful thing for All me. The and then, yes, and when I was doing that, it, um, within a few hours, my agent again called me and said to me, said, BET want me for the BET Music Awards. 
So I was like, man, this is a sign. I need to like get myself together and get, you know, get serious about this. And that's when I start feeling about that sensual, emo- not, not that I've lost it, but that music feeling that goes through my bone and everywhere and stuff. And that's when I decided, then I went to Martinique and I said, you know what? I'm going to go in the studio and put together my album. And um, that's what I did. I just went in and I started get um, some of the best musicians out of Jamaica, California, Brazil, and um, California, Brazil, and um, France, and Martinique. And um, that's what happened. I just decided to invest in myself and get everything together. Now I'm in control of all my masters and about to be in control of the ones before, but that's why I took a break for a while. And um, yeah, and here I am. And so many other things been going on for the past two weeks, although I have tender touch out going on right now, that I have to be finishing up these so that you can go ahead and focus back on tender touch because I want to release at least two more singles, very strong, real hardcore one after this before I drop the al- album in August. So um, everything just come around um, in circles, but most importantly, I cannot, there's nothing I can do in this world without thanking the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Because if it, was, if, it, if it wasn't for him, you know, I kind of keep my spiritually within because he said to me, if you keep it within, he will reward you openly. And because of all the things that I've gone through, I first have to forgive everyone. And then I have to also then now make sure that I take care of myself. Mm-hmm. And the burden has become so light on me now. The love that I have to share and to give and stuff and pertaining to even just my fans, my family, strangers, the mentally ill, everyone. It's a whole um, different arena for me personally. I'm so thankful for God to, for saving me because, um, yeah. yeah, man, definitely because you have to be strong. And as I'm saying is that most of the times when you go through stuff, it turns out to be much stronger. And I'm happy everything works out in the end, as I said, um, but yeah. Um, I hold no ill will against anyone. And it's for me, it's all about love, respect, and honor. And I will always do so. And I will always appreciate um, what people have done for me. But I also want people to see that I'm no longer a kid. <laughs> you know, when it comes to, to, um, to anything. Because um, some people can make the mistake of seeing me looking like this because, of, you know, the queen age in reverse. So what happened is that they think that we're still talking to that little girl, but I'm so not that little girl. I'm a grown woman and I feel good about it and I'm excited. You still look the same. Are you yeah, going to be they, doing any performances here in Vegas? Oh my God, listen, man. Not only I want to come into Vegas to perform, I want to come to Vegas to do the, um, there was this thing that I um, wanted to see the show. I think yeah, Bobby Brown and all these guys. Uh, New edition. They have a residency here. Yeah, man, they're doing some stuff out of there and stuff. I saw them the other night on TV and stuff. I was like, oh my God, because I used to hang out with these guys, New Edition guys, mm-hmm. and perform together, Usher, you know what I mean? Even when Lil Wayne just started out. So it, I, always, I wanted to do that, but my agent is currently putting together my US details right now. So you don't know, say, once the queen is out there, you'll be one of the first to get some tickets. Cause I want you to come on stage and come learn how to wine. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I will I will, <laughs> I will do my best to try that. I'm not a dancer. Don't worry, we can't teach you that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to get out to ATL with uh, Big Perion. He's in Atlanta too. Yeah, yeah. well I'm going, well I've been ATL before I'm in Las Vegas for sure. So. Definitely. I'm sure Natasha or, you know, my people from Deepal, they'll be able, you know, they'll have the list of where I'm going, but I'll be in mm-hmm. ATL soon for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's dope. It's, and it's beautiful. You, you, you usually see artists mention God or, or give honor to God during awards, but real people who have, who actually know him and, and can, uh, uh, attest to the things that he's done in their life personally. Mm-hmm. You don't have oh, to wait most, to get no award. I know for a fact, um, I've learned this a long time ago that yes, it's great to have awards and stuff because I've won many in my time. So, matter of fact, um, a couple of them for the past couple of months and last year, I have to be telling people I'm not ready yet because you know that's not what it is all about. But for me, 
an award is good, yeah, it's there and stuff. But the reward that you get from God for saving you, he really don't care about the awards. Yeah. Because it's more about you as a person on the inside. Because if you're broken, it don't matter how many awards or whatever you're doing, all man-made stuff that's going on. It, it's all psychological. So when you become more spiritual, you see things as uh, as how how they're supposed to be. Like okay, it's a token, but I, I'm not for. I'm more for the reward because of how broken I was because I'm always so young in the industry, not understanding, and I have to work back so hard to be in control of my stuff you know so if it you know I have choices and ways in which I could have done it but when the Lord steps in and say to me okay what are you going to do are you going to be revengeful are you going to pray are you going to fast are you going to relax and stuff which one did I chose I chose the smooth path and it worked out so fantastic for me in the end it was long but I mean we all mend fences and you know I'm good and I have my stuff now (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's that's how that's how I felt coming into this year. It seemed like um, God was saying that this year, those who who, who had to fight the hardest are going to have a, a a smooth sailing. It's going to be their time to mm-hmm. proclaim and say that they want. It's going. I to love come. the fact that they say that. No, but guess what? That that's the word you just said, proclaim. And I was going to say to you that yeah, but a lot of people don't know. But you have to claim it. And you have to earn it because you have to know that soft voice that speak within you. It's the things that you pray for. It's how humble you are as a person. And immediately you can figure out things around your surroundings when you're connected. You see, if the kingdom, I always say to people that I don't go out and talk to people about my how I think about my spirituality or anything. But if the kingdom of God is within me, why do I need to go out anywhere to search for it? I have to work towards that feeling on the inside. And actually that's what helping me to grow even better now. Before, as I tell you, I was like, I, I, I don't, I, I trust no one at all. But the Lord shows me that I need to be consistent and just observe all things. And now is my time, you know, to, to do my thing. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's beautiful. Um, I don't know if, 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 um, be brought it up but all of your social media Mm -hmm. uh, links where people can get in contact with you can you tell us the audience okay yeah i'm i'm learning i'm getting involved it's my it's my best friend hooked me up on social media because i remember me and her was in bahamas chilling out because i was writing and organizing and tell her how i want to come back and and she's like yo patrick you need to be on facebook i'm like why do i need to be on facebook because you know i'm from the 90s Right. And then she was like, yeah, that's what's going on. Okay. So she set up my Facebook. Um, she said, you have to listen. She called me literally and said, listen, dude, I know you don't want to to be on um, IG, but I set it up. And she set it up for me. And that's how I end up on it. So my IG account is the real Patra. And my Facebook account is Patra official page, Patra official page. And, um, I want people to look out also for my cooking show that's going to be coming up in the future. It's called Hot and Sexy Cooking with the Queen. It's going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be hilarious, but it's going to be sexy food all over, you know, just letting people know what's going on. So if my fans want to find me, The Real Queen P on IG and Patra Official page on Facebook. I'm not on the other stuff yet because it's too much. It's too much. But I'll, it gets to be yeah. too much. Yeah, for me personally, because I, I love nature and earth. I, I, listen, man, I work out, I lift a lot of weights, um, I cook a lot, I think a lot, and I'm, well, I'm OCD, I'm hyperactive, um, you know, so I'm always constantly busy doing something. I love to look out for the mentally ill, the elderly. So, you know, it's too much, but however, if there are parts that I have to play in the future, I will do that. But I don't want to overextend myself when it's un- it's not necessary. I had something to show you, Patra. We what we were talking what about. Are you show me? Can you see that? Pull it up. Oh my God. <laughs> Where did you get that? That was where me and Yo-Yo met. 
Oh, wow. That, that's what I'm saying. That's a long time ago. Look at, look how, look at, you know how skinny she is right there. She look like a little girl right there. Listen, speaking of Yo-Yo, um, we, when I was doing the BET Music Award, I was backstage, you know, chilling out and everything. Well, not backstage. I was in one of the green rooms chilling out. And I heard somebody say, I was like, and I looked back. I was like, every time I think about it, I want to cry because um, ever since we did that song, we've never managed to do it together because that's when I was trying to get out of my, um, not so much the record label, but my team back then. And then to see Yo-Yo in person, because she has been looking for me for years too, mm -hmm. you know, and um, just to see her in person. So when I held her, listen, I couldn't, I couldn't let go of her. She couldn't let go of me. It was so emotional that even until this day, it, it, it is such a, it was such a surreal moment. It's not like, I don't know Yo-Yo, we'll do what we're doing and stuff, but it's just perfect. It was just perfect because here I am again when, God said to me, just humble yourself, your boss already. When it's your time, it's your time. And then to go and see not just Yo-Yo, I was hanging out with Redman, those guys I've been hanging out with for years. I've seen, listen, everybody, Big Tigger, everybody that I know, kid and play. Mm -hmm. It's as if nothing, you know, but Yo-Yo man is a different masterpiece as a woman. I respect her a lot. And I think that that song that we did together will always stay there forever because it was so perfectly done. And she know how to vibe off a Jamaican girl. Cause when I was like, hello, mommy, can I speak to you about across the ocean? I'm feeling very lonely if I'm asleep. And she was like, oh my God, go ahead. That's dope, that's dope. And I was like, you need to get the lyrics. Then. <laughs> you know, so, um, and when I heard Yo-Yo part, I was like, oh my God, this record here. It's Not to cut be. you off, we have less than a minute. I don't want mm -hmm. it to cut off on you. I want to thank you mm -hmm. so much for taking the time to be on my sh our show, Perry on. And, you know, we don't want to cut you off, but it's getting ready to cut off. <laughs> so thank you so much. No Patrick, love, no love man. No love. Big respect to Judith Bali, Sharon Burke, and of course, VPAL, VP Records, and the whole crew. Big up on yourself, Patrick said, uh, watch this. But there, soon come sooner. Thank you. Big Perry. Adios. Adios. Blessings. Thank you, All right, make sure you send that track. I sure Thank will. You.